Hello again, you sick, twisted weather freaks. Welcome to another fun-filled, action-packed, and intellectually stimulating edition of This Week in Weather. I'm your host, Meteorologist DT from WXRisk.com, the commander of chaos, the colonel of confusion, the captain of catastrophe. We got to talk about weather, which is probably the greatest job of all time. So, just came back from seeing uh, the Jurassic, uh, whatever it was, movie, the and the... Uh, the great thing about it is lots of dinosaurs, lots of T-Rexes killing things and smashing things and biting things, and it's just the best movie of all time. Anyhow, let's get right to it. Okay, uh, we'll start out here, take a look at this slide, and uh, you can see that uh, <coughs> uh, in all the areas, you can notice that, that the, the drought here, now this is the drought monitor for June 19th, so it's a little old, but you can see that the uh, uh, main drought area is back over in here, and um, uh, you can see that uh, what's happened is that this was the heart of the drought area a little earlier. Uh, was in this area in here. Now what's happened is it's moved to west. And that's because recently there's been rains in these areas in here. So the drought area has weakened considerably. And we can see that by taking a look at the next slide. We'll see that this is a comparison of the week before. And, um, oops, let me clear that out here. Yeah, uh, this was the one for the week before. Why is this not advancing? There we go. Uh, here we go. And May 22nd, you can see the difference uh, right there. You can see how much heavier the drought conditions were uh, in in this area. And now, of course, it's it's it's, it's you know sig significantly lessened because of what's going on. Now, if we look at the long-term drought monitor, uh, this is the drought Palmer index. We can see where the long-term drought and moist conditions area are. So the moist conditions, obviously, we know they've been over the mid-Atlantic to some degree over in here. And, of course, they're increasing in Virginia because of the recent rains. But the main drought area, long-term drought here, has been over the southwestern state. So what's going to happen is this is where the high heat ridge is constantly going to be centered. And during the rest of the summer, it's going to attempt to come eastward from time to time, depending on what the overall pattern is. And it won't be successful. Sometimes it will be. But uh, the point is that uh, this is what's going to be going on here. So that's your base of operations. So um, for much of this summer so far, the spring and the summer, we've had this persistent trough over the East Coast, uh, you know, something like this. And what's happened is that's forced the heat ridge to stay back in here. Well, over the next two weeks or so, this trough is going to be gone, and the heat ridge will get a chance to advance to the east. And we'll see that in just a little bit here. Okay, now this is interesting map. This shows us the... Uh, uh, shallow uh, groundwater drought table June 18th and this is uh, you know looked over the last few weeks and you can see clearly see a very interesting feature here uh, obviously this is the uh, dry the uh, drought area in here we've got some dryness in here dryness in here and dryness over the southwestern states but it's fairly moist up here of course the recent rains and the Nebraska the Dakotas uh, and then look at the Great Lakes in the eastern the United States very very wet in this area so it's what this means is that uh, there's a natural trough and ridge position which sets up for the summer. So uh, the, the natural heat ridge, like we said, is long-term drought is in here, and natural trough is running this way where it's very wet. So uh, that's your natural pattern, as you can say. That's your, uh, in, if the default goes to zero, as it were, that's what you're going to normally end up with. So let's see how that plays. And that's, in fact, what we've seen. That's one of the reasons why we've had so much rain. People keep asking me, DT, why is it with the rain? What's with the rain? How is it going to stop raining? Well, it ain't, okay? And if you're getting the uh, my agricultural forecast, if you're getting the daily operational forecast, if you're getting the 30-day eastern U.S. forecast, I've been telling you it's going to be been raining, raining, raining for weeks now. So just want to let you know. If you're, you know, if you're in the, the agricultural business, construction, or what have you, you probably should be getting those products in the Mid-Atlantic region because they're pretty good stuff. Anyway, uh, let's go on to the stuff here. Uh, this is the quick drought index, uh, June 27th. Again, this was last week. And again, this shows you all just over the last four weeks, the historical average. So let me point it out right here, the historical average. But And here is the um, obviously very wet over the eastern United States and then pretty dry in this area. So this is where your heat ridge wants to be right in here. And that's where your trough wants to be because it's wet. Now, that's where it has been. And what, and what happens is as it goes on and on and on, it, it, feed back, it, it, feed, it feeds back on itself is what it does. So... Um, you know, the wetter it gets, the, the more the trough is likely to be there. The hotter it gets, the drier the ground can gets, the more likely to get the ridge. Let's take a look at some of these recent rainfalls here in the Mid-Atlantic. Now, this is a large-scale view. You can see fall away from New York City down to Raleigh and all the way out to Ohio. <coughs> and over the last two weeks, I'll show you this more enlarged in a little bit. 
there's a little purple area right in here and that's a 10 to 15 inches now this is as of uh the 25th as of early this morning so uh, you can see last 14 days but generally the big rain area has been like this as you can see notice that west of north carolina has not seen a lot of rain in the last 14 days neither has new england or new york for that matter only a couple of inches but in here uh anywhere this dark red stuff folks that's five six seven eight inches of rain in the last two weeks so that's quite a bit and we can see this a little more detail here and let me zoom in on it so you can see it. there you go now this lasts 14 days now that purple area uh let's see here that's uh near to the north of charlottesville uh there's a charlottesville let me get my marker out uh right here so this is to the north of charlottesville that purple stuff 10 to 15 inches but look at this dark red stuff in and around Richmond. That's 8 to 10 inches in there, the dark red stuff. <clears throat> Excuse me. So a lot of rain here over the last uh, 14 days, no doubt about it. In terms of what does it actually mean uh, in terms of the uh, rainfall anomalies, this is the last 14 days. This is actual rainfall above normal. doesn't include with the rains which fell today in central Virginia, southeastern Virginia. But you can clearly see that over central Virginia, up into the Shenandoah Valley, western Maryland, uh, is southern Ohio areas like that uh, that purple stuff is four five six inches of rain above normal and if we look at the rainfall anomalies now again in this image here notice that southwest Virginia this is important because you don't want to forget our friends in southwest Virginia and you know who you are look at all this area southwest Virginia has been very dry it's not seen nearly as much rain now it has been super dry but relative to normal they've been a little on the dry side certainly not what central and virginia has seen the northern shenandoah valley western maryland what have you also dc baltimore they've had very close to normal rain philadelphia so the main rain like i said definitely been in this area no doubt about it okay so we clear that out and let's go ahead and take a look and say this is the percentage of normal uh, this is yeah the percentage you can see again the dark purple stuff is 400 to 500 percent above normal rainfall uh, the purple stuff is 200 to 300 percent so there you go it's a lot of rain and again you can see the percentages let me point this out in case you haven't noticed this is that look down this area southwest virginia so over here is roanoke and this is raleigh down in here this is greensboro over in here winston salem and hickory all very dry uh below normal rainfall definitely 75 50 percent of normal and then up by north of baltimore into delaware up into here relative to normal over the last 14 days okay uh this is the service weather map sunday evening you can see the front coming through uh behind the front there's a decent shot of some cool air coming in here so that's interesting uh, and then this is the upper air pattern you can see it now what happens is um well let me go back one second on this front on this map here uh the high pressure comes in and you can see it coming in uh and it's going to drop into uh in this direction here uh following the trough and it's going to come in in this direction like this because of the trough we'll see that in one second here so this is the 24-hour map i believe no 36 hours this is monday night so uh here's our first trough let me mark it right here okay high pressure coming down north wind nice cool area high pressure for a couple days there's the midwest rain event which is going to hit the next few days in the midwest and there's another trough here so we got three of them one two three so this one goes bye bye and this is the next one to worry about and that this next one is going to bring a lot of rain to the midwest before they get hot all right so now um here we go this is uh 72 hours and this is june wednesday afternoon june 27th now the first trough is gone here comes that second one in the midwest approaching the east coast and now we can see our dome in the uh, little dark red area over new mexico developing in a broad ridge and we have a big upper low over southwestern canada and then as we go into uh this next slide now this is 105 hours this is thursday morning so we have the uh european on the left the gfs is on the right and notice the g what happens here both models here's our trough on the east coast now remember this feature started here okay and it moves over to here so now once this trough leaves the east coast there it is this ridge gets to build in and it's going to do that now the gfs has a dome over i guess uh, western tennessee eastern arkansas uh by uh thursday night into early friday morning the european not quite there yet but it's getting that way and once that trough leaves the east coast things are going to get pretty hot pretty fast as we go to the weekend so now this is uh make sure i got the right slide here um yeah 
So this is now 135 hours out and 144. So the GFS on the left this time, Europeans on the right. Uh, this is Saturday afternoon and then Saturday night. Uh, Friday night to Saturday. So the point here is both these models, only a few hours apart, now have a heat dome um, centered over the Midwest. And now the European, it's a smaller dome over Tennessee, Kentucky. Uh, the trough is still over Maine. Um, and it has a big trough over the Rockies and Western Canada, pushing into North Dakota, South Dakota. Now the GFS, you remember how the GFS always loves to overdo everything. It lo loves to go to the extreme. The GFS loves that extreme. It's, it's definitely the extreme model, oftentimes. Now again, and sure enough, look how deep the trough is here. Because this trough is so deep, this dome gets so big. Notice the trough here is not as deep. The ridge is not as deep. Bada boom, bada bing. So the GFS is probably overdoing this a little bit. Um, but not much, a little bit. And then if we look at, um, make sure I got the next slide here, yeah. So, uh, yes, yeah, so, so now we go to slide, the next one, 16. And we can see here, uh, this is the same image, 144 hours as this one. Uh, but here you can see the whole hemispheric shot. And this is the European model. So. We have one monster ridge here, actually might be a dome in this area, but you can clearly see the ridge here. And this is a dome here, the other ridge. So there's our trough right in this area. And there's another one out here in the North Atlantic. So um, now what this feature is doing, this is connected to the warm water in the Western Atlantic Ocean. So I uh, will get to that in a minute. But this feature here normally means you're gonna get a trough on the East Coast. Now this particular time, that's not going to happen, but it is going to come back as we go later on into July. So this is also connected to a lot of things. So we'll talk about the warm water Atlantic Ocean and what that does in, in a little bit. Okay, so now uh, let's take a look at some of these temperatures. Now this here is uh, Saturday afternoon on the European model. You can see the heat is mostly, mostly over the, over the south. Notice in the Dakotas, it's in the 70s, Minnesota, Iowa in the 80s. That's because of that big trough coming through. You remember we saw that? So all the heats to the south, Richmond's 91, DC's in the near 90, uh, 90 in, Ohio, in Columbus, Ohio, that's you know, 92 Chicago, that's late June, that's not a really big deal. But the GFS is substantially different. 98 in Richmond, 99 in Chicago, I mean uh, DC, uh, 96 in Roanoke, uh, 97 in Raleigh, uh, 100 in Chicago. Because GFS has got a bigger dome, a hotter dome, and also it's hotter even to, into Iowa. So there's one difference right there. And then this is the, um, if we go further in beyond that, um, uh, this is the GFS 180 hours. You can see it's blisteringly hot, 105 in Richmond, if you can believe that. I don't, but this is July 1st. So this here is July 1st on the GFS. July 1st, the 18th. Now, again, I think this is probably overdone. Might not be, but I think it is. Okay. Uh, we go further out in time here. Now, this is 168 hours out, and this is the GFS and the European. And again, the reason why uh, we have these sorts of temperatures on the GFS is let's take a look at this map here. This is the operational GFS, and we can clearly see the heat dome is here, with the white, highlighted in white. Now, this whole thing is a ridge, obviously, and there's a big trough here. So the European has a ridge also, but no dome. And notice the trough is much stronger over the upper Midwest. Here it's back here over the Rockies. Here it's over to Minnesota and Iowa. So it affects the intensity of the of the of the ridge over the Mid Atlantic region. So that's that's one difference right there. And again, uh, this is the European 180 hours. So we looked at the GFS. We saw how hot that was. Here's the European, same time frame. 92 in Richmond, 93 in DC. Okay, it's July. It's hot. Not that severe. And again. Look at the temperatures in Iowa, Minnesota, there's the GFS, Illinois, and now here's the European. Much, much cooler because the trough is much stronger. 20, okay, next we'll look at the GFS Ensemble and the European Ensemble. And the GFS Ensemble has a different, remember the trough is down like this. Here it's much more coming in this direction, and the European it is like that. Now, because of that, we still have a dome here. Uh, on July 1st, July 2nd, over the Midwest and the Mid-Atlantic states, but the European does not. It's just a regular heat ridge. And if you go beyond this, then by uh, 240 hours, both models have a broad ridge, decent trough over the Pacific Northwest, a typical summertime 
a ridge covering all the Midwest, the East Coast, into the Mid-Atlantic region, the southeastern states. Uh, and this is a July 4th, so Independence Day. It looks pretty hot. No, as long as we have a dome, it doesn't look beastly hot. I mean, then we're, we're still doing 10 days out. There could, in fact, be a dome in either the European or the GFS, so it's very possible. And then if we look at 312 hours, notice what's happening here, folks. The ridge is retreating. Look at the shift. Let me clear it out. Look at the shift from, from this to this to this. And what's happening is, remember, we talked about the dryness in this area here and the rainfall area here. And what's happening is the ridge is sliding in that direction. And we look at 348 hours out. The heat dome on the European and the GFS are back over the western U.S. And then we'd have a trough again in the east. Remember I talked about that? The trough in the east. Now, why is that always happening? Again, this, look at this huge bubble of warm air, all right, right up in the uh, warm water in here, and the cold water here. This is very, very cold water. So this is very bad for the hurricane season. The system is trying to come off of here, die in the cold water. But this produces a big ridge here. And because you have a big ridge of high pressure in the Atlantic Ocean, you tend to get a trough on the east coast, which is what keeps it cooler and wet and stormy. So that's all very, very important. Now, if we, the trend has been for some warming to take place in Africa over the last 14 days a little bit and some cooling in the West Atlantic Ocean. So there is some trend in that direction. And you can see, again, the, the correspondence here. Remember, we showed you this at the beginning. There's your drought conditions. And that is, look where it goes. See that? And then here's your, your water, your, your shallow ground conditions. Very wet. We talked about a very big trough in the east United States where it's very wet. Oops. And there it is. You can see it here. And again, you can see uh, the trough coming back in this area right here. And, and, and if you look further out, this is the European model from last Friday. And you can see the European model shifts the ridge to the Rockies. We have a trough here on the east coast again. Uh, this is the CFS, which is Sunday afternoon. This is the brand new CFS. So this is Sunday afternoon's run. You can see right here. And you can see, look where the heat dome is. By July 9th, the heat dome is here. Trough on the east coast again. Thunderstorms dropping down this direction. And look how wet it is over the Mid-Atlantic again. Bada boom, bada bing. And then even here, and this takes us to uh, July 22nd. Heat dome is over the Four Corners area. You can clearly see it right here. We have a trough right here, and it's still wet in Virginia and North Carolina and Maryland. So uh, the pattern is definitely going to continue. And finally, uh, the European from last week, again, this is week four towards July 20th. This agrees with this idea of this, the heat dome over the four corners. You can clearly see it on the European and a trough on the East Coast. So the heat's coming, and it's going to be impressive. I don't know how severe it's going to be in the Middle Atlantic yet. Uh, but it doesn't last beyond July 7th, from what I can see. And by July uh, 10th and July 12th, we're back in a trough again with pretty decent temperatures for July. So, okay, for the rest of this week, problems gets hot starting on the weekend into or next week through July 4th, and then we'll, and the heat should break by July 7th or 8th again. This is meteorologist DT from Weather Risk. Hope you enjoyed this presentation. I'll talk to you soon.